Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is JP Lee, Product Manager with Van Eck, to discuss everyone's favorite space, gaming. JP, it's great to see you again. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Hey, always, always a pleasure. How are you today? Doing great. And JP, remind the audience how video game stocks behave and where do they potentially fit into one's portfolio? Sure. So video gaming stocks, um, we have an ETF, the video, Van Eck Vectors Video Gaming and Esports ETF, ticker ESPO. And we're providing pure targeted access to the video gaming industry by investing in the largest, most liquid video game companies in the market. So as a general idea, video game stocks are underrepresented in broad market benchmarks. So if you take the holdings of the ESPO ETF or index and you compare it to the S&P 500 or the MSCI Acqui, we're talking about a 2% weighting in those broad market indexes of video game companies. And what that leads to is relatively low correlation with the broad market. And you see that reflected in, with correlations in the mid 60s for um, ESPO compared to S&P and Acqui. So the portfolio, the index, the ETF is providing diversification as evidenced by those low correlations in addition to alpha potential. So Video game stocks are growth stocks. And as you see reflected in the performance chart of ESPO, ESPO's index since inception, it's outperformed the market. And in 2019, ESPO was up about 40% versus the S&P up about 30%. And then in 2020, we saw ESPO up 85% versus the S&P versus 20, at 20%. So historically, over the last few years, we've seen the alpha potential become alpha reality. And, and that's that's kind of how I would position this this index and this group of companies in, in your growth sleeve, in your alpha sleeve. And JP, are video games subject to the same headwinds that we've seen across other growth segments, including um, innovative technology? Is the growth trade now over in favor of value? I mean, I'm sure that you've had plenty of people come on to your show talking about this before. I mean, this is at the front of everyone's mind. And you can see... Um, underperformance for growth stocks versus value stocks since we'll say the election, right? So this chart shows November 1st to the end of March and value stocks are outperforming and that's different than what, you know, how it's been over the last few years. So, you know, industries like uh, finance, industries like energy are now outperforming tech and that's different. So again, going back to where do these companies fit in your portfolio, video game stocks or growth stocks. The question is, is growth really dead? I mean, that is, I'm sure people are writing papers about it right now. Mm -hmm. And in my personal belief is that the market rewards forward-looking innovative companies and industries. So human society as a whole, we're marching towards the future. And, and there are companies out there that are aligning themselves for the future economy. And historically, we've seen these companies be rewarded with more revenues, higher growth, more users, and higher stock prices. So that's what we've seen for video game companies uh, in the last couple of years. And as a big picture story, video games are a structural long-term growth story. They're aligned with the future of interactive entertainment in ways that other legacy entertainment companies aren't. So video game investors have benefited from the fact that video game companies are innovative and forward-looking. Yeah, I would agree with you. They're just longer term more relevant than, you know, let's say an older school um, finance company, as you alluded to before. So JP, to wrap up here, keeping on that theme, what are the key trends that you're looking for for the rest of 2021? The, the number one key trend that's affecting the video game market right now is mobile gaming. So mobile gaming is the youngest, and I think we've talked about this before, mobile gaming is the youngest channel uh, when you compare it to PC or console, right? Mobile gaming only came out in 2007, 2008. And it's already the biggest segment of video game revenues and it's growing faster than the other segments. So mobile gaming is, I, you know, we believe that it's gonna continue to drive growth, revenues and engagement for the broader industry. That's point number one. Um, point number two is that there are secondary services like Twitch and Discord that these there's these platforms that benefit from uh, growth in video game users and engagement. And I, I anticipate to see further growth for social media type platforms that allow people to congregate, talk about and engage with each other around video games. That is a hot item. Um, m and activity has picked up in the last year or so, two years you could say, as these high growth companies are looking for ways to keep that growth moving. And so and, and all these themes kind of play together. So the m and activity is you, we're seeing is a large publisher, uh, you know, uh, buying up a, maybe a mid-tier mobile developer because the, the choice these companies are facing is 
Do I invest a ton of resources, time, and money into launching a new game that may not be popular? Or do I just use some of my free flow cash and buy a company that's already doing it well? And that's what we're seeing on the M&A side. Um, one more thing about the M&A too is we're seeing positioning for the cloud, right? So the cloud is the cloud gaming is going to be when you don't have to buy a PC, you don't have to buy a console because all of the work is being done at, at servers, uh, at Amazon servers or Google servers or whoever. So uh, some M&A activities being driven by tech conglomerates like Microsoft buying up publishers so they can have exclusives um, on their current offerings that they have like Xbox Game Pass or the future cloud offerings that are in my opinion, just around the corner. So those are kind of some of the key themes that are happening right now. And it's not, it's fun when you come up with these, here's what, you know, here's my outlook. And then as the year goes on, things happen. So in the last couple of weeks, Microsoft announced they were going to buy Discord. So we see m and activity, you know, on the secondary services. And I, you know, we just kind of continue to see this kind of momentum going forward as this growth industry tries to keep the growth coming. Well, JP, it makes you wonder about GameStop, right? That's, that's kind of the key question in terms of why we saw that crowd trade and, and the move that it had. You, I mean, you, you're just, I, mean, I never understood GameStop for years. I've always been wrong on that. Um, if everything's moving to cloud, Microsoft is involved, Apple's involved, um, and, and everything's taking place outside of brick and mortar. You're not going to need consoles. It's all over the cloud. Yep. It just makes you wonder, right? Well, okay. So I have a lot of opinions about GameStop. GameStop is not in the index, it's not in the ETF, and I'm, I'm not a stock market, I'm not a stock analyst, but I can say that GameStop is trying to position itself for the future, right? So Ryan Cohen has had success at Chewy. You know, go back 10, 15 years, how is Chewy going to take on Amazon, right? And you would have said at the time, there's no way that some, you know, no-name company is going to take on Amazon and not necessarily win, but make a place for itself. And he, they were able to successfully do that with Chewy. So I, I, I see strong leadership with GameStop with, you know, Ryan Cohen and his gang. And I, I can see them making some moves to position themselves favorably in the, you know, towards the future of the gaming mm -hmm. industry. What that is, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of ideas out there, but it's an exciting company and it's a fun story. It's fun. It is. It has been fun to cover and it would be interesting to see just what management does with this company. JP, great to catch up with you. As always, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Have a great day. Thank you.